Okay, welcome everyone to today's um, training on ST Open Market Approach to Laser Beam Scanning LBS for Near to Eye Displays. Today we will be hearing from Marco um, and he will be um, starting any minute now. So Marco, go ahead and get started. Hello. So let me start here. Okay, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon. My name is Marco Angelici, and I'm presenting. I'm responsible for the MEMS Microactuator Business Unit at ST Microelectronics, and I'm going to present today uh, the ST approach to laser beam scanning for near to eye displays for the open market. First of all, thank you all for participating to this online. Uh, developer conference event. I know this is one of the first presentation of the event. So it's, uh, uh, I, will, I want to give you a welcome and thank you for joining, for joining us. Let me start with a few data. Uh, we, where we start from is basically uh, from market analysis. There are so many already mobile augmented reality users worldwide. We are talking about more than 1.7 billion people connected to the phone and using phones for augmented reality. So this is mobile augmented reality. What I'm going to talk here is how to move from mobile to wearable. So we are talking about enabling the head mounted displays for augmented reality. And talking about that, what are the key requirements we have in mind uh, in particular Okay, it seems that we have some technical difficulties. Um, Eduardo, are you ready? Okay, yes. So can you hear me? Eduardo Galizzo speaking yeah. here? Okay, perfect. So let me try to take over, and this is the beauty of having a live uh, presentation. So I'm the backup for Marco. And um, okay, so uh, Marco is describing basically key requirements for AR uh, wearable devices. So. Basically, here in this slide, we try to summarize which are the key requirements that we have seen uh, working with, you know, key partners and our understanding. So uh, I, I will scroll down quickly, but basically, we definitely see that brightness is a key requirement. We uh, clearly understood the four factors, so small four factor is also extremely important in order to enable these technologies to be wear the all day long possibly okay on the head also power consumption is also extremely important because uh, you know definitely uh, battery life uh, will be a key requirement uh, and then uh, um, we need to enable that lightweight uh, is also extremely important so that's why having uh, a projection module that is small, compact, and very light uh, are key parameters. And then also latency and field of view are extremely important. So on these, uh, we might have some uh, 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 differences depending on if you're talking about mixed reality or only augmented reality, but overall, uh, range and field of view are extremely critical parameters as well as resolution, because definitely we want to enable, at the end of the day, an, an all-day uh, pair of glasses that people will not only like uh, to go around with, but will provide also bright, crispy, and uh, good-looking images with uh, the additional information, the augmented information that will be available to the final user. And at the end, an important, very important parameter is also the eye box size. Because again, if these information are too small or we need to uh, be uh, basically uh, constrained but a too, but by a too small eye box, uh, we might not be able to really reach the wider population. So overall, if we look at all these requirements, what uh, uh, we did uh, in the past, uh, now some years, you will see I have a slide uh, that describes that, is how we can enable all of that. And so if we move to the laser beam scanning technology, 
this is, uh, uh, we believe, the key enabling technology that can really enable all those requirements that uh, we described with the previous slide. So basically, uh, laser beam scanning uh, for near to eye displays are really the technology that can enable these uh, small four factors, that can enable compact illumination source, uh, that can enable pretty high brightness. And for this, of course, so we have to work uh, with the partners for the waveguides and so on. And you will see, we will present the details from that. And also, this laser beam scanning technology enabled by MEMS mirror as a key component, fundamental component, can also enable low power systems and small lightweight uh, uh, optical engines, let me say, that as you can see here, there are a couple of real pictures, okay? So here you can, you, you can have an idea in perspective to a penny, okay, what we are talking about, the MEMS mirror and the full package on a flex PCB. Then you can see here in, late, in relation to a quarter of dollar, the full optical engine that uh, we are able to enable with uh, uh, our components. And on the right, you can see basically the operating principle of a laser beam scanning technology. So we're talking about a complex solution at the end of the day. So there are a lot of pieces involved here. There are uh, semiconductor pieces, there are optical components, and there are also uh, specific manufacturing and precision in assembling all of these components. But overall, and you will see later uh, with the presentation, we can enable all of these with with a solution that really we believe is the best today in the market. And I don't know if no, Marco is back. Can you hear me? Perfect. Yes, Marco, so you're back. So do you want to continue? Okay. Thank you. Sorry for that. So this is having six kids homeschooling at home. Sorry for that. <laughs> So let me continue for that. Uh, and uh, at the at the base uh, of our MEMS uh, technology for laser beam scanning, the key pillar we are talking about MEMS mirrors. And so when we talk about MEMS at ST, we are talking about a long history. ST has been developing, manufacturing, and selling MEMS uh, for 20 years. You can see from this uh, graph uh, an example with purple color uh, starting from actuators. Uh, MEMS actuators in 2000 for uh, microfluidics, and then moving with the old wave of inertial sensor, environmental sensor, microphones, etc., to go back again to big investment in the um, actuators technology, in particular for MEMS mirror, MEMS speaker, autofocus cameras, and ultrasound uh, piezo actuators. We are committed to volumes, <laughs> 24 billion devices have been shipped in those 20 years uh, in terms of MEMS, uh, and is making ST a leader, uh, an absolute leader in this market. Talking about, uh, again, MEMS, uh, laser beam scanning, we say the key pillar is a MEMS mirror, and ST is the only company selling, producing, developing and selling uh, all kind of actuated, actuated MEMS mirror from electrostatic to electromagnetic and uh, piezoelectric. So I speak can cover the whole uh, band of requirements of our customers from low power uh, to high performances, capability to move big masses, very high field of view. So we can really cover the full flavor in terms of uh, high field of view and uh, in terms of uh, um, uh, the power consumption. So sorry to stay here for a while. ST is the undisputed leader with 12 million mirrors shipped to date on the market. Where, is the, uh, where do you find our mirrors? I just put a flavor of uh, some components where you can, uh, some products where you can find our mirrors, our laser beam scanners, started in 2012. This is what is publicly available, what can be found uh, uh, publicly. So we acquired Bitendo in 2012 with all the IPs on uh, laser beam scanning technologies. And then since then, uh, we have been developing and uh, tackling all the applications from uh, uh, Pico projection to 3D scanning uh, and 3D scanning for industrial consumer up to automotive. 
we also have uh, worked and we, we are selling our laser beam scanning in the augmented reality world, of course, for, for example, in the medical augmented reality, but also you can find a ST manufactured MEMS mirror in uh, different augmented reality uh, customers. So the first customers in the world announcing uh, uh, MEMS mirror laser beam scanning technologies like North, recently acquired by Google, uh, is, uh, is using ST um, MEMS mirrors. And uh, recently, uh, Tech Insights showed that inside also the HoloLens 2, you can find uh, two MEMS mirrors that are manufactured by, by ST. Um, we continue this activity, and uh, the reason why we are the leaders here is because ST has a, a full portfolio is a, can be considered one-stop shop for uh, uh, laser beam scanning augment, for augmented reality, and not only for augmented reality from our customer standpoint. In particular, if you, you look on the left side, here you see a block diagram. With basically, uh, a laser beam scanning uh, system is made of an electronic subsystem that is basically controlling uh, video processing and uh, controlling lasers and controlling the mirror to deflect the lasers in the right place and to get the feedbacks and the control loops. And on the right side, you see the optical engine where mirrors, lasers, and the optics are basically made. And ST has invested in all those uh, domains, so both in the electronic and the optical engine, and ST is providing the full, the full components for both, but the uh, laser diodes, that is the only part I would say is missing in this picture because ST is not in the laser uh, diode business. But as I, as I listed on the right, out of MEMS mirror, so it's not just MEMS mirror, out of MEMS mirrors, ST is uh, uh, developing and selling the MEMS drivers for each of the technology I was mentioning before, electromagnetic, piezo, electrostatic, and in particular we focus on energy recovery and performances. So thanks to our piezo mirrors, we have developed energy recovery adiabatic drivers able to cut power consumption to a very low number that is fundamental for this application. Talking about laser diodes, we discovered also laser diode drivers, we discovered that we were missing the right performances in the market and we decided to invest also there. And now we have a family of products that are best in class. We have a product with 300 picosecond rise time and fall time uh, with an ultra low power mode of functionality, few nanoseconds to go uh, in and out of sleep mode so that we can really switch off the device uh, when it's needed, where few pixels are black and there is no projection on those pixels, the laser diode are really switched off. And uh, basically this is uh, enabling the full system performances per what is required. The pixel clock is 300 megahertz. So again, it's uh, the best in class uh, family for laser diodes for this application. And we have developed two devices. One is uh, three channels for RGB, red, green, blue. And one is uh, four channels for uh, uh, including, to include uh, infrared that can be used for several applications. On top of that, there is also the, as I mentioned, control loop and the video control. So as the, as the in-house, the full capability, and again, coming back to the acquisition of Vitendo in 2012, we started from those IPs and we developed more and more IPs here in the hardware and software uh, control loop for mirrors, for lasers, uh, eye safety, uh, synchronization between uh, binocular displays projection and all the video processing capability. So this is all the service we provide to our customers. Last but not least, we have recently invested also in the relay optics. Relay optics is the piece of optics, uh, the optical components that uh, shape the beam out of a laser beam scanner in order to maximize the in-coupling to the final lens, to the final combiner element that is a typically a waveguide. So working on laser beam scanning for augmented reality requires an holistic approach. We are talking about, we had to simulate with our partners 
from lasers to the eye. So we simulated and we developed the components in order to maximize the performances, maximize the MTF, the color uniformity, the in-coupling efficiency, and to reduce at the minimum the power consumption. For that reason, it's important to work in an ecosystem. It's not just a steel working alone. Uh, we have been working for a couple of years with some key partners in the domain of augmented reality and recently we officially announced and we started this laser alliance, laser scanning for augmented reality is the meaning of laser. And basically we built an ecosystem with uh, at least the first start uh, starting companies that you can see listed here like uh, Osram and uh, Dispelix, uh, Applied Material, Mega One. They are all uh, leaders in their own segment uh, building uh, the, 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 the building blocks basically for augmented reality. And as I said before, it's an holistic approach that can enable the uh, mass production at the end of the high quality, high performance components. It's an open alliance. It has just started. More partners are going to join. We have a very good feedback from the market. We have very good feedback from our customers. And again, more and more partners are willing to join with the same purpose that, uh, of us, that is basically to build uh, uh, and create an augmented reality space based on uh, a laser beam scanning solution in order to enable this market that is start ramping up now. Thanks to this alliance, and uh, to go a little bit on details on what we have developed so far, and uh, we are basically accelerating the what we call the STAR program, the STAR roadmap, ST Augmented Reality Roadmap. In uh, January and March of this year, we started with the very first uh, proof of concept and demonstrators to show the possibility to uh, match a laser beam scanner with a waveguide for an open market application. As I said, our customers did already uh, in, in the past. We wanted to work on something that is uh, smaller and affordable and uh, targeting, as we say, an all day wearable. Uh, market. So to do that, we built, uh, in, as I say, in January and February, some proof of concepts. And now, finally, we have an engineering sample of what we call the Star Zero that is available now based on diffractive waveguides, electrostatic mirrors, and uh, focusing on the miniaturization of the uh, optical engine. So to match real uh, all day wearable small pair of glasses, lightweight glasses. To do that, we work with our partners on the, in, uh, in the laser diode. They built a module that is very compact. And of course, we work on our laser driver to match these uh, laser diodes and to match also performance wise and uh, size and consumption wise. What, uh, what is necessary to achieve those performances on ultra low power and high performances. Of course, we have a roadmap, and uh, from star zero, we move to star one, that is uh, for next year. In the second half of next year, we have already a plan, and more than a plan, we have already some IPs ready and some components validated, where we are moving to our thin field piezo mirrors in mass production. And thanks to this move from electrostatic mirrors that are in, using the star zero device, uh, going into star one, we will cut heavily the power consumption. We will reduce the volume compared to something that is already very small. And I'm going to show you in the next slides what does it mean. But we are also, again, improving performances. So we have a roadmap thanks to our thin field piezo technology that is improving performances in terms of field of view, in terms of power consumption, in terms of resolution, reducing the volume occupation, and reducing the power consumption. That's really where we want to be, and that's why we believe laser beam scanning, thanks to the scalability, you can have one mirror opening more you can increase the opening angle, and then you can increase the resolution by working on the frequency of the mirror. You can really increase the scalability without increasing volumes, occupation, and power consumption. 
just to show some uh, the, the, the different steps we put in place, here is a, a presentation, a slide of what we have done in March. It was a technology demonstrator where we took an existing pickle projector from ST, 1.7 cubic centimeter. It was not optimized for augmented reality glasses. And we ST built a reference design and worked with this Pelix to, uh, for a waveguide uh, uh, connection. So we built a pair of glasses that was basically, again, just a technology demonstrator. Uh, the waveguide used at that time was a 30 degree field of view waveguide capable of 20 nits per lumen. Uh, resolution was 540 pixel. Uh, our MEMS mirror are electrostatic and the power consumption for these uh, MEMS uh, staff uh, mirror plus driver was in the 200 milliwatts, just to give you an indication. Still using the big uh, discrete laser diodes, the three TO can package laser diodes as into this Pico projector on the bottom left side and uh, using off-the-shelf components, basically, we were able to demonstrate, as you can see from a picture in our lab taken from a phone, so I don't, it's not super high-quality picture, but what is interesting, at least, uh, we were able to show the capability to project through the laser beam scanning into a, wa a diffractive waveguide. Color uniformity here is not perfect, but the images are already good, and uh, it's a good starting point. Consider also the waveguide was a waveguide designed for fixed pixel display like uh, DLP and Delcos, so it was not optimized for uh, laser beam scanning. Since then, we have moved to the next generation, that is Star Zero, focusing on the dimension of the module. So we develop a new module moving from 1.7 cubic centimeter to something that we call Helen Optical Engine much, much smaller. We are talking about 0 0.75 cubic centimeter. And as you can see from uh, this uh, uh, picture on the right, this is perfectly matching the dimension of a temple arm for an, an eyewear solution that is an all-day wearable. What we have built today, we have the engineering samples of this part. I will show you the results later in the next two slides. Uh, we are still limited to 30 degrees by field of view by the waveguide. The, the optical engine itself with our mirror is already able to achieve a 56 degrees of field of view. So it means we are ready also for the next generation waveguides where 40 degrees and maybe 50 degrees uh, uh, will be available. Even if for all the wearable application, we believe that 30 degrees is already a, the good use case and we believe that is enough uh, for the big volume uh, of the consumer market. We, uh, uh, the, the big difference versus the previous solution on top of the dimension of the module is also on the waveguide side, the efficiency has been improved to 100 nits per lumen. Actually, we are going to receive a 150 nits per lumen at the end of this year. So brightness can be already in the range of 1,000 nits today and will be in the range of 1,500 nits at the end of this year. Just to give you a reference, they are giving HoloLens 2 from Microsoft at 550 nits. So we are targeting all the wearable outdoor application. We want to be, as we said at the beginning, in the 1,500 nits brightness. Uh, the last point below is uh, on top of the volumes, occupation 0.75 cubic centimeter that is making laser beam scanning the smallest display for uh, uh, augmented reality. We also, as I say, uh, we built uh, a new laser diode driver at 300 picosecond rise and fall time, matching this application. And we were able to match and combine this laser driver with a laser diode from our partner, Osram in this case, uh, that was, an, it was embedding the three laser uh, edge emitting diode into a single module, a single package with very small dimension. Thanks to that, you can see here the integration made by ST. So ST built this reference board. We build all the electronic board. It's a 65 millimeter by 10 millimeter uh, dimension. Again, it's a reference design. Uh, and we build this black box that is the optical engine. You can see here 
On the right side, you see some more details. You see the optical engine is not just uh, lasers and mirrors. The optical engine has all the collimation and combining optics required uh, to uh, collimate the beam out of the lasers and to combine the three colors onto the mirror. And on top of that, it also embeds, as you can see, three and four ear as a photodiode and the temperature sensor that are helping and uh, are necessary to close the loop in order to keep the color control and to keep the temperature performances and the loop uh, for the lasers and, uh, and then to keep the performances at the right level. So it's an ultra compact module. It's not just mirror, it's not just lasers. It's embedding the full system to close the loop and control the system. It's just the electronics is missing. That is part of the, the green board you see in the middle, in the center. On the left side, you have a sketch from the laser diodes module from Osram and, uh, of course, uh, the waveguide from Dispelix. That basically we are today, uh, with whom we are working today to integrate and to evaluate the full performances with this small uh, projector. I show you a few pictures. So the, the, the star zero exists. It's, uh, we have a few samples now assembled. We have a few units assembled. Uh, so we are at the very beginning, but all the tests are very good. You see here some images from our lab in Israel, uh, where basically we are able to align and collimate the laser beams, and we are able to get out uh, the right performances, the right alignment, and right balance in terms of color. I show also down an example of a projection. This projection is on the wall. So it's, uh, this is a little projector projecting on the wall. We are able to get a very, very good quality and very good uh, font readability. So the contrast is very good. The sharpness is very good. The color balance is uh, very good. And most important, there is no speckle. That is one of the key question mark typically that may arise when using laser beam scanning solution. What's next? What's next uh, is uh, the, in our roadmap, so STAR0 is what we have uh, today as uh, samples. We are going to, uh, we are already showing to key customers, we are going to start delivering parts to our selected customers in January. And uh, as per the alliance that we have built, and uh, as per some press releases that will come soon, you will see a number of partners entering into the game, in particular for manufacturing. So we will have a partner in Taiwan. We already had uh, a joint uh, meeting and the webinar, so we can mention the partner is Quanta today. Quanta is working to build uh, a full pair of glasses by Q1 next year based on star zero. And a uh, full pair of glasses means uh, including all the components. And the, on this reference platform, you're using all ST sensors, ST red, uh, RF circuits, and also the application processor being uh, a, an augmented reality glasses for infographic uh, and then symbology. It's using an STM32 application processor. What's next, as I mentioned, is a star one, where basically by mid of next year, we will have a, a very nice evolution of uh, what we believe will be really a, a killer application and a killer solution for augmented reality. Because we are going to have, as I mentioned, uh, together with new uh, waveguides already available by the end of this year at 150 days per lumen, we will have a true 720p resolution and thanks to our thin film piezo actuated mirrors, we will have an ultra low power uh, uh, actuation technology. So we will be able to move, sense, and control the mirrors with 100 milliwatt. That is an unbeatable result. So none, nobody in the market can achieve this number already today. Uh, with such dimension that will be even smaller because those, those mirrors will be smaller than the electrostatic mirrors used into star zero. So we are going to have uh, an estimated 0 0.65 cubical centimeter optical engine 
The electronics for Star One is uh, incorporating most of the passive components and all the um, uh, external components will be embedded in the driver, in the new driver with energy recovery charge. So we will have even a smaller uh, uh, electronic PCB and uh, components uh, bill of material, let me say, in terms of number of components, in terms of cost, and also in terms of uh, dimension. And most important, the full solution, not just the mirror, but the full solution, including the electronics, including the lasers, including the mirror, including the control loop, will be 50% power consuming versus star zero, that is already state of the art and best in class power consumption module for laser beam scanning. So star zero is already below one watt. That was the target we were uh, talking about at the beginning of this presentation. We want to be below one watt. What will happen with star one is that we will be below one watt for a binocular application. So two displays will be able to produce a video projection for near to eye displays. Uh, in less than one watt. And this is a really something outstanding and for which we are seeing a big traction on laser beam scanning and we see several customers coming to us asking for samples and asking for the next generation. I'm not talking here about what next, but it's interesting to see that thanks to our 10 field years of technology, we are already developing higher force capable piezo actuators. That means uh, better meter per volt displacement force. So we, we call a D31 of a piezo. It's the picometer per volt. It's, so it's the capability of displacement. A steel roadmap, in, uh, in particular in a design center, an R&D center we have just built, and for which you will see an announcement on the 28th of October, we have already in place the scalability for next generations. So we are not just um, we are not just uh, closing here. We are basically uh, at the beginning of a journey. To complete a big uh, a big uh, a little bit of a picture, when we move from star zero to star one, I was talking about going back. I was talking about 30 degrees, 35 degrees of field of view. What is interesting here is that our projector, so removing the, the waveguide, but the projectors, as I mentioned before, are already capable of more field of view. So star zero is made of two electrostatic mirrors, as I was mentioning, and as you can see, the diagonal field of view of this optical engine is already 56 degrees field of view. So it's already the state of the art for augmented reality. When we talk about star one, we are talking about a 65 degrees field of view, diagonal, with an increased uh, resolution, a true 720p resolution, and basically lower voltage and uh, lower power consumption and lower size, lower real estate, enabling the next generation module to be at 0 0.65 cubical centimeter. Last but not least, uh, the drivers. I mentioned that it's not just a matter of MEMS mirror, but uh, Team Field Piezo Technology is combining with uh, very well with energy, energy recovery drivers. And uh, we have built already uh, some IPs, and we have lots of patents on driving Team Field Piezo mirrors and controlling them. Uh, we have already available for customers, so we gave already to some of our customers demonstrator of a one over six, so a six times saving power consumption of our resonant mirrors, that is the more consuming, the most consuming mirror. And uh, we, are building, we are building now a, sing, a system in package with a new IP that is able to achieve one over 10. And for that reason, thanks to the combination of the driver and the piezo mirror, we are able to achieve the uh, very low power consumption I was mentioning before for star one. So combination of mirror, combination of the uh, driver is enabling uh, the technology roadmap and the product roadmap for next generation augmented reality for which we see a brighter future. So we see really 
a big interest, and we see here now available today a solution that is enabling uh, uh, already small, lightweight, uh, all-day wearable glasses. That's all from my side, and uh, let me thank you. And uh, again, I will ask you to stay tuned because uh, more things will happen in the next month, and we will have more and more updated all, updates also in terms of partners joining the um, alliance, the laser alliance. So we expect to have more and more um, information coming and more and more exciting partners joining us in this journey. Thank you, and thank you for participating.